Masayoshi Sun is here. He is the founder, CEO, and chairman of SoftBank Corporation. SoftBank is one of Japan's largest mobile carriers and one of the world's largest tech companies. In 2013, it acquired Sprint for almost $22 billion. It also has stakes in over a thousand other companies, including Yahoo Japan and Alibaba. Forbes recently estimated his net worth at $18.4 billion. That makes him the richest man in Japan. I am pleased to have him here at this table for the first time. Welcome. Good, Thank good you. to have you on the program. Thank you very much. You're going to speak to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce yes. this week in Washington. Yes. What are you going to tell them about the wireless revolution? Well, I would say that uh, um, the mobile internet, the in internet highway, is the most important infrastructure for the 21st century. To me, it is so clear than any, any other infrastructure that's more important uh, for the 21st century. However, U.S. is number 15 in the world. When, when someone did the survey, out of 16, number 15. Mm. So only in, in country- In terms of what, what speed, measurement? Speed, speed. L, yeah, LTE speed. Okay, so the only company U.S. beat was the uh, Philippines. They beat the Philippines. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they didn't beat South Korea. They didn't beat Japan. No, no. Many yeah. other countries, uh, you know, the U.S. was beaten. So is it, is it good enough situation for the 21st century, the most important infrastructure? U.S. is lagging behind. And U.S. has been number one for infrastructure almost for anything in the 20th century automobile, the electricity, the um, mm -hmm. uh, television, almost everything. And uh, you believe that is because two carriers, Verizon and AT&T, have more than 60% of the market? Yeah, more than 75% on postpaid yes. and more than 80% for corporate market. Right. So and they are stifling innovation in your judgment? They are happy with where, where, where they are. They make a ton of money and free cash flow uh, all dividend back to the shareholders. So they are very comfortable where, where they are, which I don't blame, you know. If, if I were on their shoes, I would be happy. But because they are in such a happy position without facing a real competition from some strong enough challenger, they can relax. Okay, so you bought Sprint, yes. a carrier. Yes. And now you want to buy T-Mobile. If we could, but uh, we have not uh, agreed any uh, formal agreement. You haven't made an agreement with T-Mobile? No, not yet. What are your chances? I don't know. We have to, we have to give a shot. Is it, is, it, is it money or is it something else? Is it? Well, I, I'm not here to talk about any detail of that situation. <laughs> well, uh, why I, not? <laughs> well, look, you know, in, in general, we have, to, we have to say. You have to make a deal. Yeah, we, we would like to we would like to make the deal happen, but there are steps and details that we have to work out. Tom Wheeler is chairman of the FCC, and, and he has suggested that that he wants to make sure there's a lot of competition in the market. Right. And so he's not in favor generally in mergers between say Sprint and T-Mobile, and you own Sprint, so therefore you'd have a huge position in the American market. Yeah. Well, look, you know. There is a two big duopolist, yes. right? And they take more than 100% of total industry free cash flow. Total industry's profit, they are concentrated to have 90%. So here comes the uh, two little ones who are not able to fight with, without enough scale. So that's, that's no mm -hmm. good. And I think uh, the situation needs to be changed. Assuming you could make a deal and had Sprint and then T-Mobile, what would you be able to do uh, as a carrier in the United States? Well, um, look, we need a, a certain scale, but once we have a, a, enough scale to have a level fight, okay? It's a three heavyweight fight. Right. Right? Well, you then, like that, don't you? Yeah, I, I, I would like to have the, the real fight, okay? Not the pseudo fight, right. the real fight. If I ha can have a real fight, I go in more massive price war, right? The you, technology that's your, war. That's your pattern. When you get a stakeholder, you undersell everybody. Yes, yes. You're willing to postpone profits 
in order to gain market share. Exactly. I want to be number one, right? Yeah. So if we were number three and if we had a, enough chance, okay, I want to be number one. So I would go, you know, price competition, you know, very much aggressively and network competition to create a world best network. I told you now, U.S. is number 15 out of 16. Yes. I, I, I'm ashamed of that. You know, I am I'm not here not to criticize U.S. situation. I'm here to say I now own the part of the responsibility and I would like to provide U.S. citizens the world number one network. Let me go back to Japan. What was it like growing up in Japan, the uh, son of Korean and Chinese ancestors? It's, it's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, Japan is a homogeneous you know, race country. Yes. One culture with one race. So if you are considered outsider, it's not easy. But nowadays, uh, I s stick up enough so people know that I am, I am you know, hmm. just myself. And then at 16, you came to San Francisco. Yes. Made your way to uh, Berkeley, University yes. of California, Berkeley. Yes. yes. Uh, and then you graduated. What did you want to do when you got out of Berkeley? Well, Make I wanted to start my own company. So when, when I was a student at Berkeley at 19 years old, I already started a small company yeah. and uh, made the first electronic dictionary. Yeah, pocket, dictionary first. Yes. Yes. And pocket. pocket uh, translator and uh, dictionary. Yes. yes. And then sold it? To Sharp. To Sharp. Yeah, yeah, for $1.7 million. Yeah. For a 19 years old kid, no, it's, it's not bad. Not bad. Okay? And, uh, and I did another computer game project, made me another $1.5 mm. million. Dollars. So I got uh, a little over $3 million when I was 19. That was a good seed capital for myself. <laughs> yes, I, I, I never used the venture capital. Yeah. So uh, you, you never went out and raised money, but you had the money no. yourself. That's better because you don't have to. In the, lead, the fewer partners you have, the better off you are. Well, if you could succeed. Yes. yes. Yeah. If you can get by without their capital. Yeah. yeah. So when did you go back to Japan? Right after I graduate, I yeah. went back to Japan because I promised to my mother that yeah. as soon as I finish my college, I will be back to Japan. So I yeah. kept my word. Yeah. And then you began your march to where you are today. Yes. Yeah. You seem to have done it by two things. W uh, not only your own company, but investing in other companies. Yes. I mean, you've had a keen eye for what might be a successful investment. Yes. Yahoo Japan. Yes. I mean, this is the most recent one, Alibaba. Yes. Alibaba is going to be a huge payday for you. Yes. Yes. It'll be one of the li largest IPOs around. Yeah. Yeah. We are lucky. Yeah. Well, you, you need a luck once in a while. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. You, your heroes were uh, Mr. Honda mm -hmm. and Mr. Morita, yes, who formed exactly. Sony. You like them because? Because they, they have a passion, they have a vision, and they're founders of a you know, huge brand. Because they are pioneer. You know, yeah. They pioneered electronic industry, they pioneered automobile industry in Japan, fighting with incumbents, not helped by the government, but they made mm. themselves. You admire Bill Gates and yes. Steve Jobs a lot. Yes. Steve Jobs, you thought, was what? You know, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah, with the art and technology combined. Yeah, the design and the engineering as yes, well. Yes. He saw with Johnny Ives, yes. understood how to do that. Yeah, so in, in 500 years later, people would compare you know, Steve Jobs with Da Vinci. That's my view. And when he look, went looking for somebody to, a carrier in Japan for his iPhone, mm -hmm. you said, me. Yeah, that was <laughs> two years before he introduced iPhone. Yes. So I said, you know, if I would enter into the mobile uh, business, you know, mobile carrier business, I need a weapon. And who can create the best weapon in the world? I said, it's only one guy, Steve Jobs. So did you call him up or did you go yeah. see him? I, I called him up and went to see him. And I, I brought my little drawing of iPod with, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, mobile 
uh, <laughs> capability. Yes. And I gave him my drawing, and, and Steve says, Masa, you don't Masa. give me, Masa, you don't give me your drawing. <laughs> <laughs> I have my own. <laughs> don't give me don't your drawing. don't need your drawings, Masa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said, well, I don't need to give you my, you know, a, a dirty paper, my, yes. but uh, uh, once you have your own product, yeah, give me, give me for Japan. Yes. And uh, uh, he said, well, Masa, you are crazy. You know, we have not talked to anybody, but you came to see me as the first guy. I give to you. Is that right? Yeah. So you walked away with the as the carrier in Japan. That would be affiliated with the iPhone, right? Before, was, before I acquired Vodafone Japan. B before you got Vodafone Japan. Yeah, yeah. So, so I said to him, you know, if you can give me exclusively for Japanese market, that would be fantastic, right? And so I said, uh, write it down, sign for me. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, no, Masa, no, Masa, Masa, no, Masa, I'm not gonna sign for you because. <laughs> Uh, because you don't even own the yeah. mobile carrier yet. <laughs> I said, well, look, Steve, you promise give me, me you give me your award. <laughs> I, I bring a, a carrier for Japan. You know? And you did. I did. I, I spent the $20 mm. billion. Dollars now, there was some concern as to whether uh, the Japanese consumer would like the iPhone. They had their own. Oh. Why did you think it would? Well, it's the you know industry's technology uh, direction right yeah. because the before iphone most of the handset were just uh, the uh, uh, crappy you know handmade uh, uh, software without operating system so that not so many you know standalone application software could come as a platform They're like a pc you know mm. this is the internet device that you can carry around so it's not mobile phone it's it's an internet machine that's mm. my view mm. and he's the only the first guy who could create a device with operating system so that it will be a, a platform for you know every applications for surfing the internet so bill gates you also know bill gates yes. and admire bill gates oh very much both of them are my heroes now why do you think bill gates missed so much well, he had a, such a fantastic success. With, you know, with, with the operating PC, system, with, with the software. operating system for PCs. Right. And uh, when you are so successful yeah. in one thing, you have something to protect. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it's very difficult to cannibalize. Um, and uh, he was retiring from the company. He, he no longer had the passion yeah. to go on to the next generation. He had other things he wanted to do in right. terms of philanthropy. Someone once said to me about Steve that unlike others, he saw everything with a beginner's eye. Yes. He saw it with a freshness so that he would start from the beginning. So therefore, he wasn't encumbered right. by the way it had been. Right. He doesn't care anybody else's uh, idea. You know, he had to create himself from the you know, pure eye of not the past, for the future. Yeah. So uh, that's what I, I admire the most. And he has tremendous focus. But are you more the financial guy who understands how to make a deal, but also understands how to find the companies that you want to make a deal about, rather than being a creative guy? Well, you know, if, if Steve is art and technology. Yes, you are. I am finance and technology. Uh, no art there. Well, I love art, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not the artist for the industry. Yeah. Uh, well, but to me, what's more important is information revolution. Mm. That's more important to create a, a new lifestyle for mankind. Okay, if I can help, you know, bringing information revolution. To mankind, I don't have to do everything. You know, I can bring everybody else's talent. Mm -hmm. I can bring and the can, I can bring the infrastructure. Yeah, you bring the I roadway bring, that they come. Yeah, I don't I don't have to create the you know a Ferrari or a Honda. Okay, I can create a highway, right, for all the beautiful automobiles. 
I can create a toll gate. I can create the, you know, the entire ecosystem for the automobile revolution. So that is what I am trying to do. I am bringing information revolution. But for, the, for these internet devices, the highway itself as an infrastructure is not good enough. That is a big problem. That was a big problem for Japan. So I challenged NTT because mm -hmm. NTT right. had 99% market share for Japanese you know, information highway. Did, when you challenged them, did they give you some fiber lines or something? Yeah, I, I asked the government to deregulate so that un, unbundle right. of the copper and fiber right. against the sub services. Okay? Yeah. So if you want to create an information revolution and want to create information highway, you need a lot of capital that require a lot of finance. Okay? So money is not the most important to, thing to me, but money is required to invest mm. a huge tens of billions of dollars okay. capex. Let's talk about the landscape there yes. first. My impression is you want to be the biggest in the world, period. That's my wish. That's your wish. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, there are also people who believe, you know, Google is laying a lot of fiber in the United States. They want to provide the highways too, the infrastructure, right? Yeah. They've got designated markets where they're... Con There's also Comcast now buying Time Warner. Mm -hmm. John Malone wanted to be part of that. Who knows, maybe Comcast will buy John Warner, I mean, uh, John Malone's company. Is, is it going to be the telcos? Or is it going to be the cable companies? That's a very good question, you know. So this is a very, very capital intensive industry. And emerging from the wireline broadband information highway and the wireless information right. highway, right. Right? right? And guess what? This kind of device, right, can get connected with a backhaul of wireline broadband or a wireless broadband. Either way, the yeah. iPad is iPad, right. right? So what people care is how the iPad or iPhone can function as smoothly. That's and fast. Fast, right? So in the past, only fixed line broadband could provide high speed internet for yeah, this kind right. of device. But now wireless is becoming very powerful that it will be an alternative. And that's the revolution right yes. there what wireless is able to do yes. without the fiber de being down. Right. And, and so therefore that raises the question too, you know, of, of the velocity of wireless and, and, the, and, and how good it is. Because, I mean, you've complained about the carriers here in terms yes. of variety, that not only are they not innovative, but you say they're, they got slow. faulty systems. Yes. Yeah. Very, very slow network and it gets disconnected mm -hmm. right, all the time and it, it, it's poor quality. It's just mm. a poor quality. And I think there is a way to fix it. How would you fix it? Well, first, I need a scale, right? Scale? Scale of uh, a company. Right. Scale right. of a subscriber, you scale of the network. You have to have enough size to compete with the big boys. Right, yeah. Well, I need to get, get become a heavyweight. Right. Right? It's <laughs> yes, a heavyweight fight. Exactly. Right? It is. I, I cannot be tiny <laughs> no, mosquito. No. Right? That will not work. Right. You know, they will S squish you. Right. And they would ignore us. Yes. Right? So that they can stay profitable and big mm -hmm. fat. Right? So I want to make them fight back so they, they also become a muscle instead of fat. Yeah. And which is good for the United States. That's called competition. Yes. That's good for the United States. Yeah. But I want to show them our technology, which we have, which is much, much more faster speed, mm -hmm. up to 200 megabit per second. So this is much faster than uh, uh, fixed line broadband. Right. Okay. We have the technology for that. We have a your wireless is faster than fixed line broadband. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. We already have that demonstration in Tokyo. Okay. Tokyo's fast. Yes. I can do that in the state also. Seoul is fast. Yes. Where is it the fastest in the world? Jap Japan and South Korea. Yeah. Uh, Australia to some extent. Yeah but not enough users. So the, actually with the crowded user, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Japan and uh, Seoul is, is the top two. You also now have this battle, this giant battle between operating systems 
Android and Apple. Yes. Which is better? Well, Apple is like a Ferrari, right? It's for, like a Ferrari. For, yeah, for high-end users, it's it's beautiful, it's good, right? right? And actually, for many it, for many users also, right. Android is more general, right? For many con other countries who cannot afford the high-end product, Android is more variety, mm -hmm. right? So most of them have a, 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 a good features. And so one's not better than the other. It depends on depends what on they can do for particular kinds of customers. Right. Uh, but because Samsung is serious about this. Yes. Yeah. What do you think of Samsung? Well, Samsung is a great company. Great company. Yeah. They, they're going to succeed. They're going to continue to grow up. How did they do it? Well, they, are, they have so many technology widths and depths, yeah. from semiconductor to the chip, you know, the, the, the LCD displays, and all, all these things, uh, they have total technology. So that, and they have a passion to make success. Take me back to the dot-com bust. What happened to you? Well, our share price went up and up. And one time, we, I was for three days richer than Bill Gates. Is that right? Yeah. For three days. <laughs> for three because, days. Yeah. Technically. Yeah. Uh, and, and Larry Ellison was actually for a couple of days richer than Bill Gates. Oh, could be. Yeah. 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 Right. But you were there for three days. Yeah, yeah. I, our company. Did you tell everybody when you were the richest man in the world? I did. did you? You know, <laughs> it was too short. <laughs> <laughs> so, Here I am. I'm the richest guy in the world. Yeah, yeah. I, I, before I, I said it, our share price went down. <laughs> so, so, before you got a chance to tell them, right. it was over. Yeah. <laughs> so for three days we were we were two hundred billion dollars yeah. in market cap. For for three days, two hundred. Two hundred billion, billion in market cap. Yeah. And then came the crash. Right. And, and what were you after the crash? At the bottom of the crash. Two billion dollars. Two billion. So you went from two hundred to two. Yeah, ninety nine percent down in one year. Ninety nine percent. And your your net worth went from what to what? From seventy billion dollars to, you know, six hundred million dollars. Really. And did you have any doubt that you could come back? Well, I, I had a confidence, you know, it's when it overshoot and overshoot down. So I had a confidence that someday it will normalize because our number of users kept on growing, our profit kept on growing. So yeah. it's overreaction, either up or down. So it will normalize over time. That was my belief. Mm -hmm. And internet will continue to grow. So as long as internet users continue to grow, the traffic continue mm -hmm. to grow, uh, it, it will come back. That was my yeah. view. Uh, someone said to me the other day, Google is going to be the biggest company in the world. Mark my word. Are they right? There is a good possibility for that. Good possibility for that. But... You know, when IBM had a, such a glory, yeah. people said, <laughs> IBM, that's yeah. it. And then when Microsoft had the glory. They said, I, Microsoft. Microsoft, forever. Yeah. Now Google has that kind of position. But who knows, 30 years later, yeah. okay? 30 years later and 300 years later, yeah. what's going to happen? You know what they call that, as you well know, disruptive technologies. Yes. They are defi definitely disruptor, smart people, a great engineers, and great vision. Mm. So th they are one of the most uh, uh, capable company. That's Google. no question. Yes, yeah. Google, no question. And I have a high respect on them. But, you know, as I said, technology evolve. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, no one technology continues to grow 300 years. The Apple still has Tim Cook, yes. Eddie Q, Yes. Johnny I and others. They are a great company also. Hasn't changed. No. Great company. And they were really running it while Steve was sick too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. They are a great company. Those two companies, high respect. Of course Amazon and you know, uh Bill, Facebook. Jeff Bezos is a little bit like you. He likes to yeah. get market share, doesn't he? Right. He's willing to cut prices to get market share. Right. It's very smart, very, very long term view. What did you think of the Facebook acquisition of WhatsApp? Very smart move. Really? Very smart so move. So you would have paid $16 billion too? 
if you had Facebook's billion two users? Yes, yes. I would, I would have no uh, a doubt for one moment. I would mm -hmm. go straight. What's your negotiating philosophy about things like this? You know, if you can figure out if it's worth it, then get it. Yeah, yeah. And pay the, if you have to pay the top price and outbid everybody else, right? If you can see the potential, exactly. just do it. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm looking at the future, not the past, not present. In f ten years, in twenty years, what can we do if we, you know, uh, get more power? So here's what they say about you too. They say not only that you want to be the wireless infrastructure and have the world's biggest carrier, but you also want to be in content. Yeah, content, application, the service, those are the fruit and flowers on the basis of the platform. So we want to provide the platform, which is the infrastructure, and then we want to help grow those bunch of different flowers and fruits. That's that's our view. So it's like a, you know, John Malone's, uh, you know, cable right company back. with, uh, you know, Liberty Media. You know? Video is really where the world is too, yeah. in terms of wireless. Yes, I mean, you can see everything, do everything right. with enormous power now. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's not just the internet. You're interested in solar. You're interested in wind. You're looking at those as future technologies that will change the world. Yeah, well, that was not my initial uh, you know, interest at all. It, it came only because of the earthquake you know, in, in Japan, Japan yeah. uh, three years ago. And without yeah. electricity, the internet does not work. The communication <laughs> yes, does not work. In, uh, yeah. right? And all the Japanese people are suffering from yeah. the shortage of uh, electricity. And, and what did you decide about um, nuclear as a result of that? I don't believe nuclear is a long-term solution. I'm against. You are. That's why I'm I'm trying to uh, uh, provide alternative solution. As but it's, a it's not. Or wind. It's not just a business decision. You think it's in the best interest of Japan. Of the people, people mm -hmm. for the Japan, and for the world. What do you think of your prime minister? Well, Mr. he's a, he's a smart guy. Uh, I don't agree everything what he's doing. What don't you agree? <laughs> Don't give me that position. <laughs> I'm going to have a trouble back in Japan if I say <laughs> comments on that kind of questions. <laughs> but you, you think he's too nationalistic? Well, he can be much more, you know, uh, um, how do you say, balanced. Balanced. Uh, than he is. Yeah. You'd like to see him more balanced. I, I, I hope he would have, at least people would see him in much more balance. Yeah. At least he's not perceived as the balanced uh, situation. That is no good for him, no good for the country. We live in a global world. But do differences in culture matter? For me, internet is already connected worldwide. Yeah. Right? So the uh, politics, the government, Divide the uh, you know barriers between the countries, but in the in the digital world, there is no boundary. We can we can travel around the world in less than one second. Okay, so people can uh, uh, communicate each other, meet the face each other over the internet, you know, instantaneously. So the world would be much more peace with mm. with peace when we. You know, forget about all these frictions and, and so on. What else are you interested in that I don't know about? Well, to me, this digital revolution is the only thing that I put my life. This is the only thing that I'm so excited about. That, you know, mankind had the agriculture revolution, industrial revolution, and then this is the third one, that information. is information revolution. And that is not a small subject. This is the subject that will last next 300 years. That's why, you know, I say we have a 300 year vision that we want to focus this information revolution and the technology evolves. So, as I said, I don't care what technology, I don't care about 
this technology is invented by us or our employees, I don't care. I want to bring everybody's innovation, bring into our ecosystem you know, together. So many American companies are interested in one brand, one business model to conquer all over the world. Mm. Okay? I'm not that kind of guy. I, w I believe in partnership. Yeah. We do many joint ventures. In my view, investing into the entrepreneurs, you know, help them grow their passion in their way. You know, this passion, that passion. You know, if I can mm. assist to all these exciting entrepreneurs, you know, come up with great technology or services, uh, I will be more than happy. You know. I don't need to be a hero. I, I would rather them be a hero in the total you know, ecosystem that we create. Mm -hmm. That is my 300 years vision. I don't depend on one product, mm -hmm. one business model, or one brand. You know? I would rather be a Silicon Valley. They are my partner, <laughs> of yeah, course. Right. But I, what I am interested in creating, I respect Silicon Valley that all the passion, all the things happening. So I want to create a virtual Silicon Valley in a SoftBank group, families, that our many brands, you know, come and bring the synergies. Yeah. Right? Synergies, and they'll all be entrepreneurial and develop yes. new ideas. Yes. And you'll get in social media as well? One way or the other, yes. <laughs> yeah, one way or the other. Thank you for coming. Masa, it's good to see you. Thank you very much. In, in terms of what, what speed. measurement? Speed. speed. L, yeah, okay. LT speed. Right. Okay. So the only company U.S. beat was the uh, Philippines. They beat the Philippines. <laughs> yes. They, they didn't beat South Korea. They didn't beat Japan. No, no. Many yeah. other countries, uh, you know, the U.S. was beaten. So is it, is it good enough situation for the 21st century, the most important infrastructure, U.S. is lagging behind? And U.S. has been number one for infrastructure almost for anything in the 20th century. Automobile, the electricity, the um, mm -hmm. uh, television, almost everything. And right. you believe that is because two carriers, Verizon and AT&T, have more than 60% of the market. Yeah, more than 75% on postpaid yes. and more than 80% for corporate market. Right. So and they are stifling innovation in your judgment? They are happy with where, where, where they are. They make a ton of money and free cash flow are all dividend back to the shareholders. So there's a price war, right? The you, technology that's your, war. That's your pattern. When you get a stakeholder, you undersell everybody. Yes, yes. You're willing to postpone profits in order to gain market share. Exactly. I want to be number one. Right? Yeah. So if we were number three and if we had a, enough chance, okay, I want to be number one. So I would go, you know, price competition, you know, very much aggressively and network competition to create a world best network. I told you now, US is number 15 out of 16. Yes. I, I, I'm ashamed of that. You know, I am I'm not here not to criticize US situation. I'm here to say, I now own the part of the responsibility, and I would like to provide U.S. citizens the world number one network. Let me go back to Japan. What was it like growing up in Japan, well, the son of Korean and Chinese ancestors? It's, it's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, Japan is a homogeneous you know, race country. Masayoshi's son is here. He is the founder, CEO, and chairman of SoftBank Corporation. SoftBank is one of Japan's largest mobile carriers and one of the world's largest tech companies. In 2013, it acquired Sprint for almost $22 billion. It also has stakes in over a thousand other companies, including Yahoo Japan and Alibaba. Forbes recently estimated his net worth at $18.4 billion. That makes him the richest man in Japan. I am pleased to have him here at this table for the first time. Welcome. Good, good to have you on the program. Thank you very much. You're going to speak to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce yes. this week in Washington. Yes. What are you going to tell them about the wireless revolution? Well, I would say that uh, um, the mobile Internet, 
the in internet highway is the most important infrastructure for the 21st century. To me, it is so clear than any, any other infrastructure that's more important uh, for the 21st century. However, US is number 15 in the world. When, when someone did the survey, out of 16, number 15. Mm. So on Sprint and T-Mobile, and you own Sprint, so therefore you'd have a huge position in the American market. Yeah, well, look, you know, there is a two big duopolists. Yes. Right? And they take more than 100% of total industry free cash flow. Total industry's profit, they are concentrated to have 90%. So, here comes the uh, two little ones who are not able to fight with, without enough scale. So that's, that's no mm -hmm. good. And I think uh, the situation needs to be changed. Assuming you could make a deal and had Sprint and then T-Mobile, what would you be able to do uh, as a carrier in the United States? Well, um, look, we need a, a certain scale, but once we have a, a, enough scale to have a level fight, okay? It's a three heavyweight fight. Right. Right? Well, you then, like that, don't you? Yeah, I, I, I would like to have the, the real fight, okay? Not the pseudo fight, right. the real fight. If I ha can have a real fight, I go in more mass. They're very comfortable where, where they are, which I don't blame, you know. If, if I were on their shoes, I would be happy. But because they are in such a happy position without facing a real competition from some strong enough challenger, they can relax. Okay, so you bought Sprint, yes. a carrier. Yes. And now you want to buy T-Mobile. If we could, but uh, we have not uh, agreed any uh, formal agreement. You haven't made an agreement with T-Mobile? No, not yet. What are your chances? I don't know. We have to, we have to give a shot. Is it, is, it, is it money or is it something else? Is it? Well, I, I'm not here to talk about any detail of that situation. <laughs> oh, uh, well, why I, not? <laughs> well, look, you know, in, in general, we have to, we have to say. You have to make a deal. Yeah, we, we would like to we would like to make the deal happen, but there are steps and details that we have to work out. Tom Wheeler is chairman of the FCC, and, and he has suggested that that he wants to make sure there's a lot of competition in the market. Right. And so he's not in favor, generally, in mergers between, say.